Good evening and welcome to Vicar's Court in Southwell to my study for tonight's service of Compline on this, the Feast of the Transfiguration, when Jesus was revealed as the Son of God on the mountaintop to Peter, James and John. In a moment we'll hear this day's Gospel reading, followed by a short reflection on it, and then we'll share together in the Office of Night Prayer or Compline. The Psalms this evening are Psalms 91 and 134. Please do join in with the verses in bold, the even numbered verses. And as usual, we'll leave a short pause at the midpoint of each verse as a way of aiding reflective reading of praying God's word together as we read it. And so a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St Luke. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I can't quite believe it's August. I can't quite believe we've reached the Feast of the Transfiguration in the cycle of the church's year. August is one of those months about which I have mixed feelings. Still high summer, yet just starting to turn, especially in the last couple of weeks of the month, starting to show the faintest shades of autumn. Before my son went to school, we always used to go on holiday in June or early July, it's cheaper, of course, and less crowded. In those days, August used to feel to me like a dead month. Everyone away, impossible to get anything done at work, nothing doing. These days, August normally feels like a great annual Sabbath. Even when I'm not on leave, things are quieter, a bit more spacious. The pressure is off to some degree. The fever of life abates. I love the slightly languorous late summer days. But not this year. Partly it's the fact that with all the continued Covid related upheaval, things at the Minster don't feel quiet at all. But partly it's also a kind of existential panic. Where is the year going to? It's nearly five months since lockdown happened and in some ways it feels as though those five months have just vanished. And here we are, September not too far off, and we're still feeling our way out of our shells back into normal life with the threat of a second wave looming as it seems ever closer. 
The most touching moment in the story of the Transfiguration is Peter's unthinking impulse to capture and prolong the moment. Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah, he says. And who can blame him? For Peter, James and John, humble Galilean fishermen, to find themselves in the presence of Moses and Elijah, two of the very greatest and holiest figures from the story of their nation's history. This must have been a blessing beyond their very wildest dreams. Who wouldn't want to hold on to that for as long as humanly possible? But of course, it cannot be. The point of the experience is its transience. And the great revelation of Jesus' identity and the correct response to it, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him. We are told not to hold on to the moment. We are told to live in the light of it. And so this is a challenge for me and perhaps for you as well. I'm often tempted to want to hold on to August, to resist the relentless rolling on of time and to regret the passing of life's moments of blessing or of rest. This year I've been perturbed by the passing of the year in a different way by the fact that we don't seem in some respects to have had summer because things have been so strange, so out of joint. For you, it may not be August, but some other moment, perhaps from the year, perhaps from some time past, that we regret the passing of, that we wish we could have held on to. Nevertheless, the lesson of the Transfiguration is the same. The point of life's great experiences is not to cling on to them, but to learn from them and, as it were, to live them out. And we do so sure in the knowledge that God is with us, as much on the dreariest winter mo morning as on the most glorious day of summer. As the final verse of a much-loved hymn for the Transfiguration puts it. Tis good, Lord, to be here, yet we may not remain. But since thou bidst us leave the mount, come with us to the plain. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We pause to reflect on the day that is passing. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Alleluia. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray. 
that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. Amen. Psalms 91 and 134. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High and abides under the shadow of the Almighty shall say to the Lord, my refuge and my stronghold. My God, in whom I put my trust. For he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his wings and you shall be safe under his feathers. His faithfulness shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night. Nor of the arrow that flies by day. Of the pestilence that stalks in darkness. Nor of the sickness that destroys at noonday. Though a thousand fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. Yet it shall not come near you. Your eyes have only to behold. To see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge. And the Most High your stronghold. There shall no evil happen to you. Neither shall any plague come near your tent. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. They shall tread upon, you shall tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because they have set their love upon me, therefore will I deliver them. I will lift them up because they know my name. They will call upon me and I will answer them. I am with them in trouble. I will deliver them and bring them to honour. With long life will I satisfy them. And show them my salvation. Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord. You that by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands towards the sanctuary. And bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth. Give you blessing out of Zion. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. A reading from the Revelation to St John. The servants of the Lamb shall see the face of God whose name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. 
They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for God will be their light, and they will reign for ever and ever. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. And so in a moment of quiet, we bring into the presence of God the day that is passing. Those we love, those we have seen or spoken to, those we would love to have seen or spoken to, our hopes and our fears for our families, our world, for the church. We lift these and all our prayers to the throne of God, to be transfigured by his love. Father in heaven, whose son Jesus Christ was wonderfully transfigured before chosen witnesses upon the holy mountain and spoke of the exodus he would accomplish at Jerusalem. Give us strength so to hear his voice and bear our cross that in the world to come we may see him as he is, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. 
as the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen.